What's cracking, big dopes? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Since we did fade the public on Tuesday this week, we didn't have a video for Friday. So I'm thinking, what should I do? Should my lazy ass just not have a video? Or should I do something, you know, get the audience a little riled up, a little excited, get a little, get a little of this face action going on for y'all? I said, fuck it. Let's work. Let's put in the work, Nicholas. And let's get them out a little bit of, uh, you know, something relevant going on. So I thought, what can I talk about for 15 or 20 minutes that's relevant to the fantasy football landscape right now? And a couple things pop into my head. You know, we could talk about Will Disley. Or we could talk about Melvin Gordon because your boy is back with the Los Angeles Chargers as of Thursday, which is yesterday. If you're watching this on Friday, welcome to the weekend. Let's get this bread. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're talking all about Melvin Gordon coming back to the Los Angeles Chargers today. My take on it, what it means for him, what it means for Austin Eckler moving forward. Are they sell high? Are they buy low? What to expect? Now, Melvin Gordon comes back after trying to demand a higher contract extension. He wanted 14 million dollars a year the Chargers offered him 10 million dollars a year and like most guys do with their girlfriends he compromised and lost 1.2 million dollars on his base salary for this season out of a 5.6 million dollar base salary he comes back after four games now he will not be playing in this weekend's game right now the Chargers are one and two they will be two and two after they play the Miami Dolphins this weekend so he comes back to a 500 team now, obviously, Gordon does not follow fantasy football Twitter. Otherwise, he would have known that running backs don't matter. In the three weeks during Gordon's absence, Austin Eckler has paced the entire AFC running back landscape in yards from scrimmage with 368. Justin Jackson leads the NFL with 7.9 yards per carry. Before you talk about Devin Singletary, this is with running backs that have a minimum of 10 carries. So Justin Jackson leads the NFL in yards per carry. Austin Eckler leads the AFC in yards from scrimmage. Melvin Gordon. W-Y-D, my friend. Gordon was great last year. No argument about that. But Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson have been great this year. However, it's very similar to the Chiefs' backfield, to the Rams' backfield. If someone seizes control of that backfield, they are going to be ridiculously valuable in fantasy football. But I think that's good news for Gordon's rest-of-season fantasy football outlook. So here's what we have. We have 12 games remaining for the Los Angeles Chargers. And that's great because we have literally a 12-game sample size of Melvin Gordon last year with the Chargers. That's how many games he played. In those 12 games, nearly 1,400 yards from scrimmage, scored 14 times, caught 50 passes on 66 targets. Those are monster per-game numbers. Those were the running back three in fantasy football on a per-game basis behind only Saquon, behind only Todd Gurley. Here's the interesting part, though. In those 12 games last year, RB3 in fantasy points per game, he only had a 64% touch share in this Chargers backfield. This year, Austin Eckler has a 69.5% touch share over Justin Jackson. Those other guys that were ahead of Gordon last year, Barkley had a, an 80% touch share in his backfield. Gurley had a near 80% touch share in the games prior to when his knee flared up at the end of the year and CJ Anderson started getting 20 carries a game. But it was their backfields, right? But Gordon was able to be super efficient on a much, much lower touch share in his backfield. Austin Eckler was still very much involved last year. That was only going off of the 12 games that Gordon played in. That was not me taking the other four games and combining those into the overall touches of the Chargers backfield. So those are very, very real, realistic touch share numbers for Gordon. So basically what happened was this year, Eckler slid right into the Melvin Gordon role of last year into this year while Melvin Gordon's been gone. So what do I expect to happen? I think it's gonna go back to exactly what we saw last year. The reason people are hesitant on Melvin Gordon is because people assume that Melvin Gordon is this bell cow who gets 25 to 30 touches a game. He was never that guy. Melvin Gordon, like I said, got 65% of the touches last year. So people are like, oh, his touches are going to go down. They're not because he was never a guy getting 80 to 90% of the touches. I think Eckler slides back into his role last year where he's getting, you know, 30% of the touches, maybe 35% of the touches. Justin Jackson, again, becomes irrelevant in fantasy football. Now, it's possible that, that Melvin Gordon gets eased back in, like right off the rip. Again, he's not playing against Miami this weekend, but he'll be eligible to play next weekend when they play 
against Denver. Now, here are their next seven weeks before their Week 12 bye. Denver, Pittsburgh, at Tennessee, at Chicago, Green Bay, at Oakland, Kansas City. Now, it's a very tough slate to to run against, right? Because you start off with Denver, Pittsburgh, Tennessee, Chicago. Those are tough run defenses, but things get easier. When I look at it, though, like this backfield, the reason that Melvin Gordon is so valuable is is the receiving work. The reason all of these running backs in this backfield are so valuable is because of the receiving work. This was a, a tweet from right before the actual NFL season kicked off, right after the preseason games where we were trying to figure out the split differential between Eckler and Justin Jackson going into the year. And I talked about the receiving work in the Chargers backfield is just as, if not more, valuable for fantasy than the goal line work. These were Chargers running back numbers in 2018. 134 targets, 107 receptions, 1,050 receiving yards, and seven receiving touchdowns. That's like wide, those, those are like high end wide receiver two numbers in fantasy football. And that's from the running backs in the Chargers backfield. It's what makes the running back one in this offense, whoever is a starter in this offense, so valuable. And they're basically game script proof or matchup proof, right? You might be running against a tough defense on the ground. But these running backs catch so many balls, right? This year, they've targeted the running backs on 26% of their overall throws, which is the seventh highest rate in the NFL. Last year, it was 27%, which was the third highest rate in the entire NFL, only behind New England, New Orleans. Two years ago, it was 23%, which was also top 10 in terms of rate of targets going to the running back. So you can see, it's a huge part of their game plan, and they're going to continue to do this, right? So I think Gordon comes back and he is the workhorse. But again, that doesn't mean the bell cow. It doesn't mean 80% of the touches. It means 65% of the touches. So despite Gordon being the RB3 in fantasy points per game last year, he did not have a single game where he carried the ball 20 times. He never hit 20 carries in a single game. Again, this backfield is like the, the Saints backfield where the touches are divided and they might come at a lower number but they're also way more valuable than other backfield touches relative to other NFL teams because they know how to use their running backs. They involve them in the passing game and they get them in space. Rest of season, Melvin Gordon, without a doubt, is a running back one in my eyes for fantasy football. Does that mean running back three fantasy points per game? I don't know, probably not, just based on how good Eckler's been and based on the rest of the season schedule that they have is pretty tough, it looks like. But top 12 for sure. Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being, you know, a top six, top eight rest of season points per game guy. Because so you look at the other guys that are, you know, right now they're top five, top six, top seven. It's like the Derrick Henrys and it's like guys like that who aren't really even involved in the passing game and have a lot of things working against them. And the only reason I think they're in there in the points per game basis is because guys like Melvin Gordon have not been in the fantasy football world yet. So I think Gordon hops back in and relative to the other fantasy football running backs right now is definitely a top eight option. What does this mean for Eckler? Well, I think again, that he takes back over the role that he's had over the previous two years. And it's not like You know, people are like, oh my God, he's so good. There's no way they could put him. Like that is what who he's been since he's entered the NFL, right? He has always been good. It's not like the Chargers are just realizing that he's good because of what he's done in the first three weeks of the season. They've had him on their team for the last two years. And we talked about it a lot this summer in our uh, bounce back and post type sleepers video. We had Eckler as one of our top three bounce back players way prior to when we even knew Melvin Gordon was going to possibly hold out. So this is just based off Eckler, who he's been in the NFL so far and what kind of role we thought he was going to have coming into this year. We knew at that time he was going to have a 35-ish percent touch share, right? And this is directly from that blog post. I'm just going to read it off. Eckler's quietly been one of the NFL's most efficient backs since entering the league in 2017, both as a runner and a pass catcher. He averaged 5.5 yards per carry in 2017. He more than doubled his carry total in 2018 and still kept his yards per carry above five at 5.2. He averaged 10.3 yards per reception in 2017, which was sixth amongst all running backs with at least 25 catches on the year. That's a huge number for a running back, 10.3 yards per reception. Usually that's a non-repeatable statistic, but Eckler did it again. He caught 12 more passes the following year, and he actually increased his yards per reception from 10.2 to 10.4, which was third in the NFL. The guy is just a playmaker and a big playmaker too. He was number one among NFL running backs last year in breakaway run rate, the highest percentage, 9.4% of runs that went for 15 or more yards. Almost 10% of his runs went for 15 plus yards. He was fourth in the NFL last year in yards per touch. If he played a full 16 games last year, if you take his 12 or 13 game pace, and put it out to 16 games, he would finish with right under 1,100 total yards and seven touchdowns. Those were borderline top 24 fantasy running back numbers last year. So he continues to be 
even if he falls back into that 30-35% touch share with Gordon there, which is what I expect to happen, he is still a borderline flex play, but I'm definitely not one of those people telling you to buy Eckler. I don't think he's a good buy low candidate right now because at the end of the day, borderline RB2 flex play numbers are not what pushes the needle in fantasy football. Those are not the guys that end up winning you championships. So I think he is a flex option going forward and you could start him in your lineup uh, on most weeks. However, just his role is going to make him a little more boom bust than you would like to have. Like you'd obviously like to have someone that's a little bit more secure, but Eckler's got the talent. He's got the efficiency. I would actually err more on the side that Eckler is a sell high candidate than a buy low candidate. Because if you could find someone in your league that's thinking, oh, Eckler's been so damn good. There's no way that they're going to have Gordon be the workhorse here. And he thinks that it's going to be a 50-50 timeshare going forward, right? And, you know, Eckler's still going to get a lot of the receiving work, which he probably will. But Gordon is just also so involved. Like both guys can eat in the receiving game, but Gordon is going to be the main runner now going forward, which is valuable because they get a lot of goal line work there, obviously. But if you can find a guy who really, really likes Eckler going forward and looks at him as more than, you know, a back end RB2 or flex play, then I would actually, like I said, err on the side of selling Eckler as opposed to keeping him. So Gordon up, obviously Eckler down, but Eckler is not like someone that becomes unstartable. What does it mean for the rest of the Chargers? Not much. I mean, they've already been feeding their running backs. I don't think much of the other playmakers, it, it really changes. I think Keenan Allen is going to continue to eat. I think Philip Rivers, we know who he is. He's been in the league for fucking 42 years already. That's really what I got for y'all today. I just wanted to hit on this topic because it's one of the bigger topics of the week. It's obviously the biggest topic of the week. And I know y'all probably wanted some breaking news. What do I do right off the rip? How do I approach the situation? Believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, I got shit to do. I can't just be putting out fucking breaking news videos all the time every time some fucking report comes out. But this was a big one, so I wanted to make an individual video for it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're doing everything fantasy football about five, six days a week. Tomorrow's video will be my Patreon live stream. So that is a private live stream that I do for my Patreons only, which will get you access to the live stream. So you can ask all your sit star questions. You'll get my weekly rankings, which are already posted for this week. The exclusive waiver wire article, which I do not put out anywhere besides Patreon. And you will get access to our forum, which myself, Noah, Snacks, and Animal are very, very active on. Patreon.com slash BDGE. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button. And I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Peace.